Let us start off by paying homage to Willem Einthoven, the inventor of modern practical electrocardiograph. He was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1924 for the invention of the ECG. But ECG in his days was not a small machine like what we see in the hospitals nowadays. This was one of the earlier ECG machines, commercial ECG machines. You can see that the subject had to immerse three limbs in jars filled with salt water in order to get ECG recorded. And this was such a large machine, the string galvanometer invented by Willem Eidhoven. This is a commercial version. You can see the company's name also here, an image from Wikipedia. And even in those days, tele ECG has taken off. That is, Willem Eindhoven's lab, physiology lab, was about six miles away from his academic hospital, and the ECG used to be transmitted through telephone. That is, Trans telephonic transmission to the academic hospital about six miles away in 1906. Move on to 2024, miniaturization and micro miniaturization of electronic circuits made the advancement possible so that you can have ECG even in a watch. A small wristwatch can have ECG recording. The prototype, you just need to apply the watch on the wrist so that the back portion of the watch acts as one electrode and with the other hand you touch this crown button over here, you need not press it and you choose an app from the watch to view the ECG. ECG can be viewed as a single lead ECG because the back portion of the watch acts as one, lo uh, one lead and you touch the crown button with the other hand so it will get an ECG from lead 1. This is useful for rhythm analysis. Cannot be used for analysis like detection of a myocardial function. Studies have shown that such single lead ECG using ECG watches can detect atrial fibrillation, one of the important causes for embolic stroke. So this is one of the latest advancement in ECG. And you know that ECG monitoring is commonplace in ICUs, operation theatres, emergency departments, and even it is possible to have ECG of astronauts being monitored when they are in space. We know future space projects are being planned like the Artemis mission to the moon once again. Surface ECG is the electrical activity of the heart recorded from the body surface. The electrical activity starts in the rhythmic pulses generated by the sinoatrial node situated at the junction of the superior vena cava to the right atrium. And from the it passes through internodal pathways. There are three internodal pathways from the sinus node to the atrioventricular node. And a branch of one pathway passes to the left atrium also, which is known as Backman's bundle. And the impulses are delayed a little bit in the AV node so that atrial contraction is over before ventricular contraction that is known as atrioventricular synchrony and you have atrial help or the booster pump action for ventricular filling. Major portion of ventricular filling is by ventricular relaxation but about 15 to 20 percent of the ventricular filling is contributed by atrial contraction. That is why cardiac output can decrease if there is sudden onset of atrial fibrillation in which atrial contraction does not occur. So 
ஆஃப்டர் தி ஏவி டிலே இட் பாசஸ் ஆன் டு தி பண்டில் ஆஃப் ஹிஸ் பண்டில் ஆஃப் ஹிஸ் பாசஸ் த்ரூ தி ஃபைப்ரஸ் கெலட்டன் ஆஃப் தி ஹார்ட் இன் தி ஏவி ஜங்ஷன் அண்ட் பண்டில் ஆஃப் ஹிஸ் ஃபர்தர் பிரான்ச்சஸ் இன் டி டூ தி ரைட் பண்டில் பிரான்ச் டேக்கிங் இம்பல்சஸ் டு தி ரைட் வெண்ட்ரிக்கிள் அண்ட் தி லெஃப்ட் பண்டில் பிரான்ச் டேக்கிங் சிக்னல்ஸ் டு தி லெஃப்ட் வெண்ட்ரிக்கிள் this is needed for a sequential contraction and synchronized contraction of the ventricles and the atria to produce a good cardiac output and these signals can be recorded from the surface ecg you won't get signals from the sa node or av node in the ecg you will get mostly the atrial activity known as p wave and ventricular activity known as QRS complex the left bundle branch has further subdivisions into posterior fascicle and anterior fascicle and sometimes there is also a small septal fascicle which is not shown in this diagram and the branches of the fascicles arborize and reach the percune system the percune fibers reach each and every myocardial fiber causing electrical activation of the myocardial fibers and excitation contraction coupling that is how the sinoatrial activity reaches the myocardial cells and produces myocardial contraction these are the usual electrodes attached to the body surface for recording an ecg right arm electrode usually color coded red left arm electrode usually color coded yellow and left foot electrode color coded green these three are the active limb electrodes there is a right foot electrode also which is color coded black as it is indifferent or neutral for comparison only no leads will have right foot as a component of the electrical activity but right foot electrode is needed for all leads and these are connected to a cable next you have the chest leads v1 to v6 v1 is in the right fourth intercostal space close to the sternum v2 in the left fourth intercostal space close to the sternum v4 in the mid clavicular line in fifth left intercostal space position of v3 is taken as between v2 and v4 and v5 v uh, and v6 are in the same horizontal line as v4 v5 is placed at the anterior axillary line v6 at the mid axillary line v7 will be posterior axillary line but it is not usually recorded and from these 10 electrodes you have 12 leads recorded in the standard ecg these are the usual 12 leads recorded in an ecg and there is an additional long rhythm strip for rhythm analysis usually it is lead to because p waves qrs and t wave are very well seen in lead to and is useful for rhythm analysis this is the rhythm strip which is seen at the bottom of all the modern day page writer ecgs this type of recording is known as a page writer if you have one strip at a time it is a strip chart recording and when all the 12 leads are simultaneously acquired and recorded it is a 12 lead ecg these are the limb leads lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 they are the standard limb leads and you have the augmented limb leads avr avl and avf next comes the chest leads v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 and v6 in addition to this sometimes when you want to detect right ventricular infarction 
right sided chess leads may be recorded that is v3r and v4r can be recorded in addition to these then sometimes uh, v7 v8 and v9 can also be recorded but not routinely done that is the standard 12 lead ecg which is usually recorded while analyzing the ecg you go in a sequential manner with rate rhythm and then analysis of the waves start with the p wave pr interval qrs complex in the qrs complex you look at the morphology of the qrs complex then qrs axis electrical axis of the qrs st segment you can see that the st segment though it is supposed to be horizontal it's truly not horizontal it is slowly upsloping and merges with the ascending limb of the t wave the true isoelectric interval in the ecg is the t p segment that is from the t wave to the next p wave this is the true isoelectric interval in case of st segment you look for st elevation st depression pr segment also sometimes could be depressed or elevated though it is rarer then you look at the morphology of the t wave and you also see the qt interval from the onset of the qrs complex to the end of the t wave that is a qt interval very important in cases of arrhythmias pr interval is from the onset of p wave to the onset of the qrs representing atrioventricular conduction and in the chest leads you look at the progression of the r wave in v1 there is a small r wave and an s wave and this is transition you can see that v2 there is a change from v2 to v3 there is a tall r wave here and a small s wave in v1 usually the s wave is dominant because this is over the right ventricular region v1 v2 leads are over the right ventricular region and uh, these leads are over the left ventricle so you have a dominant left ventricular activation seen here that is why you have taller r waves as you go from v1 to v6 here is an enlarged view with uh, markings for better clarity pr interval from the onset of p wave to the onset of the qrs complex tp interval from the end of t wave to the onset of the next p wave tp segment the isoelectric interval pp interval from onset of one p wave to the onset of next p wave pp interval is used for calculating the atrial rate then you have the qt interval from the onset of qrs complex to the end of t wave this actually represents almost the electrical systole of the heart and is very important in arrhythmias you can have arrhythmias if there is qt interval prolongation and it is mandatory for qt testing to be done for every new drug introduced into the market to see to it that it does not produce arrhythmia rr interval from peak of r wave to the next r wave it could also be calculated from the beginning of the qrs to beginning of qrs but usually for simplicity you take from peak of r wave to peak of r wave that's the rr interval usually used for calculation of heart rate or to be exact ventricular rate then st segment from the end of the qrs complex to the beginning of the t wave but beginning of the t wave may not be an exact point because st segment might slowly merge into the t wave that is the st segment very important in myocardial infarction st elevation myocardial infarction is detected by noting st segment elevation in addition to the usual p qrs and t waves in some conditions there could be additional waves one is a delta wave delta wave is at the onset of the qrs complex 
and shaped almost like the Greek alphabet delta or the delta of a river. That is a delta wave seen in pre-excitation conditions like WPW syndrome. Then there could be another wave known as the epsilon wave at the end of the QRS complex. An additional notch could be there at the end of the QRS complex in conditions like arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. That is the epsilon wave which is also sometimes called as the post-excitation wave. When delta is called as pre-excitation wave, epsilon wave can be called as post-excitation wave. Both are arrhythmic conditions. And even in normal individuals, after T wave, there could be an additional wave known as the U wave, which can become more prominent in those with hypokalemia.